Happy Thursday morning. Good to see all of you again. I'm Eddie. This is my wife, Mickey. We're the Lawrence's. Live in Florence, Alabama, pastor at Grace House, and do a daily devotional on Tuesdays through Friday at 1030. And uh, we love meeting with you folks and opening God's Word. And we pray today will be a blessing to you. We're continuing in our study about who is Jesus. And currently, we're uh, studying about his apostleship, if you will. He's our chief apostle. And so let's say good morning to some folks. Hello, Robin and Jana and Sherry and Mike and Vicki. Blessings to you all. Hope you're enjoying this study, encouraging people to take some notes so you can continue to dig and go deeper. So get your notebook out, maybe, or uh, your notepad on your phone. Yes. And uh, happily share with other people if you're if you're blessed. Uh, I'm having a little snack, so uh, forgive me that for eating in your cheating. presence. Yeah, yeah, this is some uh, what do you call it? apple apple loaf? It's a harvest apple harvest. Love. It's got apple and nuts in it and cinnamon. Mm-hmm. Fresh out of the oven by Mickey Crocker here. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. It goes good with a cup of coffee. It does, but I might not should have made it because I just keep going back up there and slicing a little bit more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Delicious. <laughs> anyway, so we're just, uh, I'll send the recipe. You want the recipe? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, it's a gluten-free version, but you'd never know that. It, it's uh, no, it's delicious. It's thank you so it. much for slaving over the oh, stove to make no, it. No, I did. <laughs> Hope Larry's there with you, Robin. I don't know if he's uh, hanging in there with you or busy today, but good to have you on there. Yum, yum! Give me some. I better stop. Yeah, better stop. I've been enjoying this study, Who is Jesus? It's a very foundational study, and uh, we need that. You know, we need to be grounded in, uh, on the Word, and uh, Jesus is our Lord. He's our Master. He's our Savior. God of very God, man of very man, and it behooves us to press into a greater understanding of just who He is. And when we did our teaching on uh, on on, you know, we spent several sessions on identity, mm-hmm. you know, and we mentioned that a number of times that uh, in order to understand who we are, we need to know who he is. And that's so true because our lives are hidden with Christ and God. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm enjoying this study and there's more uh, to come. Yeah. Hey, Pastor Doc. It's Jean. Hey, Kathy. Good to see you all this morning. Good morning, folks. Gary and Susie, good morning to you. And it is a beautiful morning, and I checked the uh, weather app, and uh, right now it's showing Sunday morning to be clear and like in the mid sixties about wow, the time we meet. Nice. So if, if that holds holds true, <laughs> it'd be a lovely morning lovely. to worship in the great under the great expanse of the heavens, so to speak. So looking Absolutely. forward to that. That's good. Good news. Well, are we ready to jump let's, into the Word? Yeah, let's go. Thanks again for joining. There's Mickey. Bless you, brother. Good to see you. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And for those of you who will view this later, we bless you and thank you for stopping by and viewing the video at that time as well. And hey, Miss Paula, we are continuing to pray for Brooklyn, which declare healing and a swift recovery and um, just breakthrough for her in Jesus name. And good morning to Sherry. Well, we're going to start in Galatians four today. So if you're taking notes, Galatians four, uh, four through we're going to revisit that seven. From yesterday. We, yeah, we read this yesterday. Paul writing to the Galatians said, "But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law." to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. 
That was a foundational passage that we looked at yes. yesterday. And, and to do a very quick revisit, just a, a few seconds here, uh, we spent a lot of yesterday on, on that phrase, and God sent for, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Uh, and we went back to Daniel's 70 weeks prophecy and showed that using a Jewish calendar, that Daniel basically prophesied when the Messiah would walk the earth, when he would be put to death, told us uh, that the temple would be destroyed later after that, and then there would be a lot of things happening. Then there would be the initiation of a last seven-year period, and he gives us information about that. But just how striking it is that the Old Testament is so precise in saying when the Messiah would be on the scene and what would happen to him, and only Jesus of Nazareth, uh, he's the only personage, if you will, he was much, well, that lived in that the only candidate. <laughs> yes, in that time of human history to fit the bill. And oh, did he fit it perfectly as we've been learning, as we've studied about who he is. And then God sent forth his son. That word uh, sent forth is the Greek word apostello with a prep in front, another prep in front of it, ek. He sent forth out of. Uh, in other words, the first apostolic assignment and mission that we see to usher in the New Testament era was when God sent forth his son. And, and you read the additional verses today. Not only did it, this word is used to God sent forth his son, but then God sent forth his spirit into our hearts. Mm -hmm. He sent his son into the world. That's the incarnation. And he sent his spirit into our hearts. That's the indwelling. Mm -hmm. And all of that is apostolic because it's that same word, um, the basic and we're going to we're going to spend time this morning developing a deeper understanding and meaning of, of the idea of the of the of the word apostle uh, that's used in the New Testament, and and it's used in various forms. And basically, it means to be sent forth. And Jesus was sent forth. And 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 if, I tell you what, let's read um, Hebrews three because this. Galatians 4 passage, I wanted to just really focus on God was the one sending him forth, but he is called our apostle. Hebrews 3 uh, verses 1 and 2, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. So we see uh, that Jesus was the, the apostle and high priest of our confession. Mm -hmm. Yes, the apostle. He's the, the apostle, apostle of apostles. So, Amen. Capital A on apostle. Yeah, and notice it refers to, uh, to, to him who appointed him. Mm -hmm. And again, that's the idea of having an appointment, being given an appointment, being given an assignment, a commission. And God sent him forth. And so we, we just see this idea developing in the scripture. And then Jesus called his disciples unto him. And it says he called them apostles and he sent them out. Uh, he is the chief apostle, if you will. Uh, sent out those disciples on apostolic mission. And that's just, that continues on today. And we'll, we'll if we get to it, end up talking about there's a general apostolic mandate on every believer. And then there are specific apostolic mandates given to some individual believers. But let's look at uh, some of the um, ideas behind this word. We talked about this some yesterday, but... Uh, you know, if you do some digging, there's just a lot of good information out there. Rick Renner does a lot of word studies, and, you know, uh, Bill Johnson has some good teaching and others. But let's let's go through. I think I've got uh, six different um, historical uses of the word apostle, and we're going to uh, go through that with you today. Again, just understanding this whole idea of apostolic, because as we mentioned yesterday, some people, uh, when they hear the term apostolic, they think of some fringe group in the body of Christ. But oh me, it's, the apostolic is ground zero mm -hmm. when it comes to the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of those he, he discipled, the ministry of the church. And our teaching in the New Testament comes from many of those apostles and their associates in that sense. That's apostolic mm -hmm. teaching. The scriptures talking about those spiritual gifts said God gave first apostles. Yes. That was yes. the uh, foundational gift. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Absolutely. So this is God's idea. And so we want to just try to broaden our understanding and be able to get our wheels under us so that we can roll with it. So we're going to look at these different words uh, that have been used for the word apostle historically. In the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, uh, one of the words that's translated to, uh, with this idea is shaleach. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I said that kind of close to right. And it talks about a legal position of one who served as a representative envoy for someone else under that person's authority. So uh, a sent one as an envoy under someone else's authority. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, the, that's one of the Hebrew uses. And when you get to the New Testament, as I mentioned earlier, you have the word uh, apostolos. Uh, and then the apostello, um, you know, apostolos, talking of a person, apostello, descending out, the apostolic action, if you will. And you see that develop in the New Testament in a number of ways uh, in Jesus' ministry. And uh, he would send them, you know, uh, sent them and you'll find a cult. Uh, send them, a man will have a room prepared, you know. Mm-hmm. He sent them into the cities by two. And you see the use of this term, this sending um, you can almost hear the authorization in it, the delegation in it, the charge in it, the mandate in it, sent to be sent for. And that occurred, this word in its various forms occurs almost 100, I mean, almost 80 times. I think it's 79 times mm-hmm. in, the, in the New Testament. So it occurs uh, numbers of time. And in its real basic idea, it's a person sent on a mission and really... Uh, when we're talking about a, a church who recognizes someone's got a call to a particular nation and that, you know, they ordain that person, they send them forth, that's apostolic. And, and that person's often called a missionary. What means that they're an emissary on a mission, mm-hmm. an ambassador on a mission, uh, on an assignment. Jesus was an apostle who had been appointed, who had been sent forth. And sometimes... Um, we tend to categorize, you know, we, we tend to grow things in the Scripture, and I don't mean necessarily add to them, but uh, uh, looking at it from different perspectives and creating categories. But just want people to understand, and its basic emphatic meaning is to, to, be, uh, to, to be ascending forth or to be one sent forth with an assignment, an appointment, a mission, And there's an authorization that goes along with that. So uh, I I personally believe, I know that we use the term apostolic and apostle and maybe in a different sense uh, than we would have 20 years ago. But even then, we talked about, uh, you know, missionaries, director of missions and so forth and uh, heavily believed in the the, the uh, ordaining and setting in place and sending forth, and regardless of what churches may refer to it as or call it, it, it in New Testament terminology, it is apostello. It's it's there's an ascending forth. You know, one thing we didn't mention in that Old Testament um, idea with a Hebrew word is uh, in the Jewish uh, history. There's a saying about about this is that uh, the man, the one who is sent, is the equivalent of the one who sent him. Yes. And so that's quite a powerful idea. Yes. God sent forth His Son. The Son sent forth His Spirit, and that they are the equivalent. Yes. That was part of the rabbinic, uh, one of the rabbinic sayings, and of course Jesus. Uh, Jewish and was um, familiar with Old Testament, was familiar with synagogue and all of that. And you, you see him telling his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And in that particular scripture, it's interesting, this apostello, the Father sent me, and, I, and so send I you, pimpo, uh, is the, uh, pimbo is the Greek word, and it's the idea of one who's authorized, then sending someone out and uh, there's a little variation there in the meanings of those words, but it's still what you're saying. You know, you're sent out to represent the one who is sending you. And, it, and when somebody's dealing with them, it says if they're dealing with you. Mm-hmm. And that you see that terminology. Paul talks about being an ambassador for Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Paul says, for me to live is Christ. I mean, that's if you think about what that says, for me to live is Christ, uh, you know, we're to live as Christ. We're to represent him. We are now Christ's body in the earth. He had uh, 30, 33 years that he walked in a physical body in the earth. He ascended, poured out the spirit that empowered him while he was here into his believing ones. And now we are walking the earth, representing him to the world Mm -hmm. uh, with his authorization, his mandate, his spirit, very own spirit. So, it's quite an honor. Yeah, that's a wow. And, that's and a, a wow truth. And a calling up yes, for us yes. to represent him. The other, the third historic um, use of the word apostolos was used as like a captain of a mm. group of ships that the Roman Empire would send out to colonize other parts of the world. So the captain would be in the very front of the ships as it landed, giving orders for so the whole to tell the whole troop how to advance. So uh, that's an interesting idea. Yes. The apostolic is at the front. The apostle is at the front. Christ is the apostle at the front, Mm -hmm. sending out, uh, telling us how to advance. Yes, and there's a lot of ideas around, to me, around that word picture of uh, the apostle being the, the, this Roman captain. I mean, when Romans went to new lands, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I've read the stories where they, they run their boat ashore, pile them up and burn them. <laughs> and, and in some cases they did so. And what was the message? We're here to stay. We're here to take over and we're not turning back. Mm-hmm. And this captain, this apostle, it's a term was used historically in that sense. He was right up front, and that's where we get a New Testament teaching, uh, that same ideology of being the forerunner. Jesus is our forerunner. The forerunner is the one who gets there first, who clears the path for those who will come behind. All of us have had forerunners spiritually in our lives that made it easier for us to uh, receive, uh, I mean, their work, their toll, their ministry opened things up that we didn't have to replow that ground. It's already been plowed and we can take it farther because of forerunners mm-hmm. and thank God for forerunners. And we, be, I believe there's a particular anointing on our state, Alabama, which means thicket clears forerunners to lead the nation in some ways. And historically we've seen that happen uh, in the bad and in the good. Right. But there's an anointing, I believe, on the people of this land to be forerunners and so I love that idea of the apostle, the captain in the ship, the one right up there in the front saying, okay, let's charge, guys. Mm-hmm. And the idea of the charge that those captains on those boats would be given was to colonize, to, to colonize the people that they were going to. In other words, when we get there, now they're thinking Roman, Roman empire, Roman government, Roman democracy, Roman way of doing things, representing the emperor. When we get there, we're going to create the culture of Rome in this place. Mm -hmm. And people are going to serve the culture of Rome. Well, our apostle Jesus has charged us, commissioned us to go into the nations. And if we go in his spirit and do what he did, we create a culture and atmosphere of the kingdom of God. And when that's done correctly over time, it becomes easier for people to become convicted and and be birthed into the kingdom. And there's some nations now that are lighting it up because of the work of forerunners. And thank God for the body of Christ, all of you, regardless of what denominational label or lack thereof uh, you, you may be affiliated with. Thank God for what you do in the area of missions and evangelism to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial and resurrection. You are brothers and sisters. We are in this together. And uh, we have an apostle Jesus who's led the way and others who followed him. And we're taking ground for our king in his kingdom. Hey, man. Hey, man. That's good stuff. You are sent ones. Yes. Amen. Uh, the next one uh, is, is, is really interesting because there's sometimes historically uh, in, the, in the Roman culture and empire, this word apostle, it, it literally referred to a document that people were given uh, to, to, to authorize and verify who they were and therefore where they could go and what they would have access to. We would call that a passport. 
Mm-hmm. And so this idea of apostle, one who's been authorized, credentialed to go where they otherwise could not go. And when you apply that to the kingdom, uh, that means when God gives you an assignment, he grants you the authority, gives you the keys uh, of that region, that territory, that whatever it is that he's sending you into, where things can be unlocked. Uh, the, uh, that apostolic anointing will open up gates and open up doors mm-hmm. that others can go through. You remember Peter had been given those keys and some of the others went up into Samaria and uh, people started getting saved. But only when Peter arrived, with that apostolic anointing expressly given him by Jesus, then the Holy Spirit uh, came upon them. And, you know, I believe that's just a picture of how that apostolic anointing can work, the contingent upon the assignments given. We, we, if, and if it's easier to palette for people to refer to some of them as missionaries, when God calls someone missions, and they go into that place, it's amazing. They'll be given anointing to acclimate, to learn the language, to be given favor, uh, and to see the kingdom expand. So the idea of a passport, you know, that when we, when we go on mission trips, you show that passport, and that means, yes, you are off, you, as a citizen of the United States of America, uh, that's who you are, and you're granted access. And the word... That's a power in and of yeah, itself. Yeah, there's a legal uh, aspect yeah. of that too, mm-hmm. and we're and in the kingdom, it's a, a legality in the realm of the spirit. Yes, you know that we have a, the authority of Christ, and so any spirits contrary to the Holy Spirit, uh, then they have to give way because we've got the passport, the the verity, the credential that we are His representative. The fifth idea, historically, the, this word, the use of this word, is the very idea of ambassador or envoy, the one who represented the person or the authority mm-hmm. who sent them. And so we've already kind of danced around yeah. that. The, in the Hebrew references, but mm-hmm. this is this is telling us that also in the Roman references, mm-hmm. or if you will, historical references, that it had that implication as well. Yes. To be an envoy and, and going back to what you're saying, to you, you're representing someone just if that if that person were in your sandals. And wow, that's so New Testament in its in in, in its application in its theology mm-hmm. and in our in the in the teaching mm-hmm. of Christ and His apostles. Yeah. That's so New Testament. We are ambassadors for Christ, envoys, emissaries for Him. And there's a sense in which um, you know we have this ambassadorial anointing on us as Christians. And when we're in a foreign land, it's like we're an embassy. You know, we travel to different places and as an American citizen, if you get into trouble or you're needing help, you go to your embassy. And when you walk into that embassy, it's just as if you're walking into the United States of America. The authority, the availability of resource, and that nation that that embassy's in, they know they can't go beyond those gates. Mm-hmm. That's that's considered territory of the United States. So we are ambassadors, and in a sense, when we're in we're when we're in new territory, we, we become embassies. Mm-hmm. You know, a place where heaven uh, heaven can be released on earth, uh, and the kingdom of God is operating. Amen. Well, let's look at John three sixteen, uh, as and as we're thinking about this term, uh, yeah, apostle sent, or sent, sent one mm-hmm. idea. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send, and there's the word apostolo. His son into the world, world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Uh, that's the mission. That's the assignment that God has in mind for the sent ones that He's sending mm-hmm. out. Yes, yes, um, I, I love that. Uh, he didn't what he did send him to do, and what he did not send him to do. Jesus is specified that. Mm-hmm. God did not he sent, not send him into the world to condemn the world. So we as believers, we, we never need to embrace a ministry of condemnation. If we are embracing a ministry of condemnation, 
then uh, that is not a Christocentric ministry. It's it, by that I mean that that's not what Jesus walked in. He did not come to condemn the world. Didn't need to. Why? Because the next verse, 18, goes on to say, people who do not believe him are already under condemnation. Uh, So he didn't come to assign condemnation. He came to uh, offer salvation and to deliver salvation to those who would receive it. So, again, that idea that... He said, I only do what I see the Father do. And why? The Father's the one who sent him. Right. He was under authority. Yes. He is under authority. And again, going back to regardless of our affiliations, ultimately, uh, we're accountable. And and there's a sense in which, uh, you know, whether in a local church, a pastor or eldership, uh, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. That word rule tells us there's a governing, there's an authority presence in eldership that the people are under, and they're accountable to rule well. And and there's a sense in which uh, when people uh, recognize that and respect it, that there's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think if the, if, if the elders are ruling well, and if you get outside of that, then um, there's... I think we can open doors to the enemy in our life. And uh, and then there's like, uh, if you're a denomination, there's usually those who have been charged with oversight. Mm-hmm. Uh, episcopos, a bishop, if you will, an overseer. Mm-hmm. People use different titles. But the idea is those who oversee, those who give account to God as they oversee the souls of other people. And there's there's... I didn't mean to get too deep into aside this, the different Greek terms used, pastor, you got episkopos, you got poimain, which means shepherd, you got a presbyteros, which means elder, uh, you got apostolos, because you got apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, you've got all these things. But I'm talking in basic uh, ideas here. There's governance, uh, there's accountability, uh, there's authority. Uh, accountability vertically. There's accountability horizontally. I know at Grace House we have an eldership, Mm -hmm. but we also have outside counsel. We call those apostolic advisors, Mm -hmm. people that we believe uh, are recognized and have been credentialed uh, through their ministry, through their integrity, through their experience through the years, that this is strong, stable, grounded biblically, that if we need uh, help in any way, we can call upon them they speak into our lives. And uh, we have three of those uh, that, that we look to. So there there's always needs to be uh, accountability. You know, we, we're not called to be solo, like solo apostles or solo prophets or whatever out there on our own without accountability uh, in, the, in the multitude of counselors. There's wisdom. Yeah, there's, there's safety. Sa- there's safety. And so we see... This idea in the scripture modeled, if you will, Jesus. Um, you, you see, you see, like here, God, God the Father is the sender. Mm-hmm. Galatians four four, God sent forth His Son. Mm-hmm. Hebrews three, uh, by Him who appointed Him. Uh, John chapter five, I only Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Uh, his declaration, I come to do Thy will, O Lord. A prophetic statement He fulfilled. You see this. He was um, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. He faithfully carried out the apostolic assignment on his life that no other person could do, mm-hmm. he, and he did it. Uh, but he did it under the authority of the Father. Yeah. So what about John seventeen eighteen? You want to yes. give an illustration of that? As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Yes. So there Jesus said, as you apostello, or apostolic, however you say that, mm-hmm. <laughs> as mm-hmm. you sent me, that's the word. Yeah, same word. Same word, then I sent you. He was sent, then authorized to be the sender. In Matthew twenty-eight eighteen, after his death, burial, resurrection, he's in his Uh, post-resurrection glorified body he tells his disciples all authority has been given me in heaven and earth now you go preach the gospel in the nations baptize them in the name of the father son and holy spirit 
And then you teach them to observe, to keep, to do, obey, fulfill all the things I taught you to do. And that's passed on. So then they were authorized to send out those whom, to whom they would minister. And that's, that apostolic anointing uh, has continued down through the centuries to today. People may phrase it differently, articulate it differently, label it differently, but hopefully they're doing it. Mm-hmm. So four elements of the apostolic that we might look, up, look at as we're uh, rounding it up today. Uh, you are sent by someone with authority. Yes. So God has the authority, and He sends mm-hmm. you. He sent Christ. There is someone, and Christ sends us. There is an authority. Uh, so you're sent by someone with authority. Yeah. You're sent to represent the one who yes. sent you. And let me say on that first one, if I may, um, again, God will call you and speak to a person. But you also see in Scripture modeled other seasoned leaders who uh, come alongside and confirm. Like in Acts 13, uh, they were praying. You had uh, apostles and prophets there. They were praying. And the Holy Spirit said, set aside Paul and Barnabas for the the ministry that I've given them. And that was a missionary assignment where they sent them forth. Again, you don't don't see... necessarily someone you know God sent, uh, has now God told me uh, I'm an apostle I made me a business card and that settles it mm-hmm. no there's there's a lot involved in that and I do believe in that there are people with apostolic uh, individual apostolic callings Absolutely. on their life today it manifests in different ways depending upon the assignment given but yes God still calls assigns and sends forth and thank God for local fellowships who are a part of that in nurturing and cultivating, recognizing, and sending forth people. Amen. But so. God does the calling. Like, our, our, you know, people, we have four children, and people ask, are in the ministry? Well, all of them are at some level. But I don't call them into the ministry, you know. The, the, five, the, the God has to call them. But, wow, I'd do anything I can do to support and help and be a part of sending them forth. Uh, but... The heavenly calling is, is, mm-hmm. is very, very important. So you're sent by someone with authority. You're sent to represent the one who sent you. You are sent with a particular assignment or a mission in view. And you're sent with all the resources and power needed to accomplish the assignment or mm-hmm. mission that you've been tasked yes. to. And that's important to know. When you know uh, God calls you, He equips you, He gives you the power that you need to yes. do what He's calling you to do. And that apostolic anointing, again, uh, can open gates. The keys of the kingdom it can open gates. It can open up areas. Um, and again, it's not saying that someone's more powerful than someone else or someone's better than someone else or somebody's spiritually superior to someone else. It's Faithful is he who has called you who also will do it. It's being faithful to the call of God on each of our lives. Some people are called to be, uh, you know, in, in the, I love uh, Lance Walnall's teaching and uh, it, Bill Bright taught some of this too, the, the seven mountain mandate, uh, you know, that we need believers in all those various mountains out there, the government mountain, the education mountains, arts and entertainment uh, you know, the, 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 there's seven of them, but you, you need Christians uh, being sprinkled in all of those and God raising up people to walk in kingdom authority to release the kingdom of God into culture. And also the Ephesians 4.11, uh, you know, these they're specific individual apostolic mandates. Mm-hmm. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets. And it's interesting he didn't say, and he gave 12 to be apostles. Mm-hmm. He said he gave some to be apostles. And there's no indication there that it was just a one-time deal because he mm-hmm. says, until, mm-hmm. that's a time word, until the church is mature, fully reflecting Jesus Christ in the earth. And so that hasn't happened yet, you know. Uh, so there's still that five-fold ministry, of one of which is that apostolic mantle and anointing. I'm not real... Uh, necessarily really big on the titles. I'm, I'm more concerned in, that people are functioning in the anointing that's on their life, but recognizing the titles, I'm not against that either. Um, I, 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 I don't want anything to be a hindrance to the flow of that anointing. And I think we should, re- we should recognize that in the body of Christ. Amen. 
Well, we hope you've enjoyed today as we've talked about um, talking more about who Jesus is and the apostolic uh, calling, gifting on his life. He is the apostle and the high priest, and he has sent us. God sent him. Yes. God sent his spirit. We, there's all kinds of teaching. It um, helps us understand God's heart for the world and for us as yes. we understand this apostolic gifting and calling. And I love how the commissions end, uh, you know, in Mark 16 or Matthew 28, and where Jesus basically said, and as you do this, I will be with you mm-hmm. until the end of the age, until this all wraps up and the second coming occurs. He is working in our midst through his Holy Spirit to make sure that ever the everlasting gospel, the ageless gospel, the faith once delivered to the saints continues to go out to the world that they may know him who was crucified for them and become sons and daughters of the living God. Well, it's been good to have you with us today. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 1030 for um, one more day uh, in this topic. And uh, you might take a moment and hit the share button if you enjoyed this teaching today. Thank you for that. So we'll see you back here tomorrow at 1030 a.m. God bless you. We love you all.